Hello and welcome. My name is Joshua Wright. I'm a senior instructor with the SANS Institute. And in this video, we're going to look at the steps to install and configure the Android emulator. So in this video, we're going to look at a couple of different items. We're going to look at installing the Android Studio and the Java Development Kit tools. We're going to look at configuring your system to use the command line tools that come with the Android SDK tools. We're going to look at updating your Android virtual device images, creating an Android virtual device, and optimizing optimizing the Android emulator performance. Finally, we'll look at some startup options for the Android emulator as well. So first, we need to download a couple of pieces of software. We need to download first the Oracle Java Development Kit. So we're going to go to uh, oracle.com and look for the JDK and download the JDK that's appropriate for your platform. We're also going to get the developer Android tools. We're going to go to developer.android dot com slash developer and we're going to download Android Studio. I've downloaded both of these tools already in my downloads directory. First, you're going to want to install the JDK, just accept all the defaults and finish the installation. And then you're going to want to run the Android Studio as well, accepting the defaults. Now when the Android Studio setup finishes, we're going to hit next and we're going to start the Android Studio software for the first time. I'm going to say I don't have a previous installation. I'm starting for the first time here. And I'm going to let Android Studio go ahead and allow firewall access. And then it's going to download all the Android SDK information that it needs. I'm going to choose which kind of a UI theme I want. And I'm going to let it download these SDK components. And this, again, will take several minutes. But it will give you the ability to create a brand new Android virtual device. Okay, and now the Android Studio setup is completed, so I'm going to go ahead and say finish. And now I'm going to close the Android Studio. Now, one of the things we want to do after installing Android Studio is edit our system path so that we can, from a command line, use some of the very useful but kind of hidden command line utilities that come with the Android SDK tools. On a Windows system, the Android Studio components are installed in Program Files Android Android Studio, but the tools that we're interested in are in Users, your username, App Data, Local Android SDK. So this is where a bunch of the other tools are that we want to be able to reference to directory specifically platform tools and just the tools directory. If we go on the platform tools directory, we can see some command line executables here we want to be able to reference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in my toolbar so that the entire path is highlighted and I'm going to copy it into my clipboard by right clicking and saying copy. Now I want to add this directory to my path and there's lots of ways to be able to edit your path. The way that I find most convenient is to go to start run and then run system properties advanced and then OK. And now in the system properties utility, I can go to environment variables. I can edit my path. I'm going to go to the end of the path, add a semicolon, and then control V to be able to paste in that directory. Now I'm going to hit a semicolon and paste that in again. And this time I'm going to shorten it to just the tools directory instead of platform tools. Now I'm going to say OK, OK, and OK. And now I'm going to start a command line prompt. And now I'll be able to run all of these utilities. These three utilities, ADB, Emulator, and the Android Batch Script, are going to be particularly useful to us. And we'll be able to run them from anywhere we are on the file system from a command line prompt. What we're going to do next is we're going to start the Android SDK Manager. And we do that just by running the Android utility. The Android SDK Manager is where we can download and update versions of the Android platform that we're able to emulate on our system. By default, it installs the latest released platform, but we can also frequently get pre-released versions of the platform as well. In fact, all of these are pre-checked for us. We're going to deselect those because we don't we need to install all of those. But if we want to install an older version of the Android platform, let's say we want Android 4.2 for testing an application with an older Android platform version, we can select the SDK platform and then which sim system image we want to use. And typically, I'll pick the x86 system image because that will be able to perform the best. 
I'm also going to install one more important tool we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, the Intel x86 Emulator Accelerator, which is also known as Haxum. I'm going to say install these three packages. I'm going to say accept the licenses for each, and then say install. When the Android SDK Manager finishes installing the selected packages, we can close it. And I'm going to run the Android utility again to be able to create my virtual device with the settings that I want, but I'm going to run Android Space AVD this time. And it will start the Android Virtual Device Manager. And the Android SDK and the Android Development Tools installs this default Nexus 5 system image, but we can create our own as well. I'm going to create an AVD called my AVD, we can give it a name and name we want, and we choose the kind of platform type we want to emulate. I frequently choose the Nexus S because it doesn't require a whole lot of system resources and the screen size is convenient enough to fit in my Windows system here. I can choose which version of Android I want, the target level. I'm going to stick with Android 4.2.2, but you can see that we could also install Android 5.1.1 or Android 5.1.1 with the Google APIs installed. I'm going to keep the CPU type Intel x86 because that will give me the best performance on my system. And I can even choose to give it a skin which will give me some hardware controls off to the side of the Android virtual device. I could even use my, virtual, uh, my real camera to virtualize here. I can give it internal storage. I can give it an SD card, a virtual SD card if I want. And if I have a GPU a video accelerator, I could use that feature or I could snapshot and save the status of the virtual device every time I close it. I typically don't use that snapshot feature because I find that it reduces the overall performance of the Android emulated device. I'm going to say OK here and acknowledge the creation of the AVD. And now if I wanted to, I could start the AVD right from here. But there's one more step that we need to do. Before we run the Android device, we also want to install the Intel Haxum tools. And the Intel Hardware Acceleration Manager, or Haxum tools, allow us to use the processor's feature to get better performance out of the Android virtual device. Now, in this Windows environment that you see, I'm running inside a virtual machine on my Mac. So on my Mac, I want to go to the Virtual Machine Properties. And I want to go to the processor settings, go to advanced, and I want to make sure enable hypervisor applications is installed. And if you're running in a virtual environment on Windows, this is a similar feature for a VMware Workstation or VMware Player. If you're running the Android virtual devices on a native Windows machine, you just want to make sure that your BIOS has the VTX feature turned on, which is sometimes hidden in processor settings, sometimes even in security settings on the device. If you're in VMware and this feature is not turned on, we need to shut down the virtual device go to your uh, virtual device settings, turn this feature on, and then restart it again. I already have that feature turned on on my system, so I'm going to return to my Android SDK directory here, and instead of platform tools, I'm going to go up one, I'm going to go to the extras directory and the Intel directory. And the Intel directory is where we had that third option from the Android SDK manager, which is the Intel Haxum tools. I'm going to go ahead and install the Intel Haxum software on my system, accepting the defaults to use this feature and get a lot better performance out of the Android Virtual Device Emulator. Once the Haxum installer finishes, we could just say finish, and we're ready to start our Android Virtual Device. Now, we created a device called MyAVD, and we can start that right from the command line, or we can do it right from the AVD manager. I prefer to start the Android device from the command line because it gives me some controls that I don't get from the GUI interface. For example, if I'm installing an Android application and I wanted to capture all of the network traffic to and from the Android device, I can add a command line feature called the TCP dump feature to save all that network traffic right to a packet capture file. So I'm going to use the emulator utility. I'm going to reference the name of my Android virtualized with the at sign in front of it. And then I can add different command line parameters. I can say things like scale. If I want to make the system just a, a little bit smaller, not quite as big to fill my screen. If it's a big tablet or something, I can scale it as much or as little as I want. But I can also say TCB dump. 
and save all of the network traffic from the Android virtual device into the named file that I specify. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to start the device and we want to make sure we're seeing this hacks is working and emulator runs in fast virtual mode. That tells me that it is interacting with the hacks and features. It's using the hardware acceleration features and I'll get a much faster Android virtual device experience. Okay, and after a minute, the Android virtual device is booted and it's asking me to go through the initial setup. Click OK. Now, right from here, I can look at my applications. I can install applications. I can use these side buttons here to be able to go back to the home menu. I can use the web browser and all the other built-in Android functionality. So from here, you're able to use the Android Virtual Device Emulator. You're going to be able to continue using it to install applications, capture network traffic, and evaluate Android applications using this terrific tool. Until next time.